Hi, Thank everybody. <laughs> Hello. So we're here with uh, Sashka Regina today, uh, who's going to talk about building truly powerful and influential brands with us. So welcome. And uh, just briefly telling you that uh, she is the leading international brand and business strategist for creative visionaries and also an entertainer, author, speaker and serving people who want to go from no name to brand leadership without selling their soul, but leading with it. So please, Sashka, would you like to start? Thank you so much, Rita. Hello, everybody. So uh, today I'm going to be speaking about, in particular, why aim to build a brand that's going to influence generations. I've also put a poll up so you can let me know if you're employed, self-employed, unemployed, still a student, what's happening in particular for the tech jobs fair, for tech innovation and career. So why build a brand, why at all, uh, that's going to influence generations and create generational wealth? This is something that I specialize in and I want to give you some I don't want to particularly say motivation because mo motivation is fleeting, but I want to give you some um, anchoring points that you can latch on to so that you can develop yourself, especially if you're employed, self-employed, still a student, um, and you're wanting to put yourself out there. So I'm going to close the, uh, hide the poll from the stage for now, but you can still enter uh, what you want to put in there. So I'm just going to hide that for now. Uh, and if you have any questions, just let me know in the chat so I can know what's happening. If you have any questions, why? So what is your why? A lot of people have a lot of methodologies for your why on why you wanting to do something. Why are you learning what you're doing? Why are you interested in tech? Why are you interested in innovation or in the career choice that you've chosen? And I'm a little bit skeptic about the why. Uh, I've crea created a methodology on how to find your why or to unlock it. But in all reality, in all honesty, why you get out of bed is not because of your why. It's in reality because you need to empty your bladder. If you had to sleep in bed all day, you would uh, not be able to get up at all. So the reason why you get out of bed in reality, is to relieve your body of tension, of uh, lying in one spot, so to speak, the whole night after resting your body. And you need to give yourself something new to do. You need to give yourself your body some, an action to do. So why you get out of bed is discipline, and you've disciplined yourself through creating habits. And sometimes they're negative habits, sometimes they're positive habits. Some negative habits are lying in bed or getting out of bed and waking up and checking your phone is the first thing. Not really the most positive thing to do for yourself. Or something positive is getting out of bed, going to relieve your bladder, and then you drink a half, a, half a liter of water because you've just lost that whilst you were sleeping, so you want to replenish your body. Your why is intrinsically much bigger than just a career or just a profession or serving somebody in something that you're doing in terms to earn money or to serve somebody. Your why has an overarching value to it, an overarching drive to it, and you need discipline in order to achieve that. And we're going to get back to that a little bit later. But your why, why you want to build a brand, why are you even working at all? Just to make money? Mm. Yes, that's a result, but I think that why you want to be doing this is actually because you want to be doing something with your life. You want to be serving a bigger purpose that's out there. And that bigger purpose is not to be confused with your profession or your career. And your purpose is not your identity. Your purpose is how you respond to everything that's happening in life. So whether it be social, educational, vocational, familial, health-wise, how you respond to that is your personal unique purpose and how you deal with that and how you move on to the next level and upscale your life and in terms also your business, your career and your vocation. Now, why you want to build a brand is the following reason. is because you are the missing piece to the puzzle 
in order to create generational wealth. Now, generational wealth is knowledge. And that knowledge comes from experience, it comes from learning, it comes from a drive, it comes from a hunger that you're wanting to learn something new and expand within yourself and not just stay in a comfort zone and live in fear your whole life. Now, in tech jobs and your career, you want to, whether you're employed or self-employed or putting yourself out there, you are the expert. You're the expert to the extent of how much experience and knowledge you've gathered. That's the generational wealth. Whether you're speaking to your friends, family, an employer, human resources, whoever it is on a podcast, you are sharing your experience and your knowledge. And that piece of information is going to be heard by somebody somewhere at some time and it's going to spark off an idea that's going to help them expand on their knowledge and experience and the cycle is going to keep on going it's like when you throw a stone into a pond or river whatever and it just ripples out so that ripple effect is what's happening and you are the missing piece in the puzzle now to build that brand for generational wealth you're going to need three things and I love working in analogies so I've created mad m-a-d and there's no chronological order because everything's happening at the same time so M, you need to master your craft, A is for action, and D is for deciding. So these things are happening at the same time. Now, say, for example, you're employed or you're a student and you're like, oh, my God, I would love to be like someone that you're admiring. OK, and whoever that person is that you're admiring, you are giving yourself from here to here. And in between is a gap. This is the space that you know that you can expand into because you can see that what you want to achieve is possible. And you're going to be able to expand into that. But you need to decide that you want that. And by deciding, I also mean that you need to work on your mindset. You need to work on your personal growth and you need to work on your energy. These are very important elements in order to achieve that desire that you want and be able to expand into it. So when you decide, it's done. There's no, oh, please send this to me. Oh, please, can you make this happen? You decide. You say to yourself, for example, I decide that I'm the expert in innovation in robotics. It's decided. Now what you're going to do is between here and where this gap is, you are going to create action and you're going to master your craft. So you are going to learn everything that you need to learn and more and beyond in order to reach that level. And you will go beyond that level by the time you get to there. And you're also going to need action. And action includes marketing tools. You're going to need certain tools in order to get yourself seen, heard, visible. Be able to put yourself out there as a brand that's going to create that generational wealth. Things, marketing tools are things like a blog, for example, creating videos on TikTok or Instagram Reels or on YouTube. Uh, things include as well being on podcasts, on interviews, and in magazine interviews. It's going to be things writing a column, for example, being a columnist. If you're doing uh, e-papers for the university as a student, whatever it is or any research, you're going to find the right marketing tools that align with you. So as Rita mentioned in the beginning, your soul is going to feel, I feel very comfortable being on videos and creating videos. I enjoy doing this. It brings me pleasure. It makes my heart sing. I really want to do this. And you put your master and your knowledge into those marketing tools so that you can put yourself out there to get seen and heard. And that companies, when they get to meet you, if you're applying for a job, you're not just an employee. You're an asset. You're a missing piece to their puzzle because you believe in yourself. You've decided you're creating action and you're mastering your craft. Nobody in this world knows everything. So even when you go to a company or to an employee or you're going to be working with a client, nobody knows more than each other. Each of you need one another to co-create whatever is needed to go from here to expand to where you want to go. So why you need to build a brand to influence generational wealth is because you're the missing piece. You're the one that's going to be triggering 
a ripple effect for the next generation. And a very simple example. So Tesla, we all know about Tesla and some generations only know Tesla through Elon Musk. But Tesla was way before, as we know, for some generations, way before Elon Musk. Elon did not discover whatever Tesla was bringing around. Tesla had already discovered that, but before that, someone discovered it as well, Albert Einstein. And that triggered, triggered a ripple effect to Tesla and Tesla all through the generations until it gets to Elon Musk. And Elon has a ripple effect for him mastering his craft that he ripples out. We are all a missing piece and you need to build a brand and a brand is what's perceived in the minds of a community. Now, when you're putting yourself out there with the marketing tools, creating discipline, consistency, you are in effect also creating a community. And I don't want to say you're creating of like-minded people because we're all different. We have different personalities, but we may have similar interests, similar values, but we're not really like-minded. We just tend to feel the energy in a similar way. And being in this community, that's what creates the brand because the brand surpasses different generations, different decades that are moving past. And that's it. So uh, I want to see if there's any questions, if you have anything to ask. I've kept this very, very short. Um, hey, Rita. Hello. So hello. it's good to have you here. So I don't know if there's any questions that you want to ask or that we can go through to keep this short and sweet. Very good. So, um... Your why is bigger than a career. Your purpose is not your identity. Master your craft. Learn. Take action. You're an asset, a missing piece. Do a puzzle. These were just a few of the great insights that you have just shared. And I'm wondering if we're going to have people asking. We have somebody here with a raised hand. So let's invite them on stage. Let's see here if this works out all right. Um, hello. Let's see if this is working. Do you see anyone coming on stage? Uh, me, no. No, me neither. Ashish. Oh, yeah. it says uh, it's on stage. Yes, indeed. All but right, no, let's like try gone. another one. Maybe he's gone. LDJS oh. Pereira. Yeah, there we go. I clicked on him as well, him or her. And we don't see anyone on stage. Maybe this is not working. Please, uh, would you also share your thoughts or your questions under the Q&A tab? We can ask your questions uh, if, even if we don't, if we aren't able to bring you on stage. Uh, there we go. Okay, now it's working. Awesome. All right, let's see. Let's not throw our fireworks before, <laughs> before we see someone there. Hello? Maybe this has to do with poor internet connection. Probably. Hi, Mike. Okay. Hi, you there? Hi. 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 Okay, this is working. So, do you have a question for our panelist, uh, Sashka? Yeah, actually, well, what happened? I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer. Hi, hi, bye. Uh, I'm an engineer, graduate from the University of London. And uh, I just want to say, I, I uh, in 2006, uh, when I was graduate, I studied something, some different field, like electronic system engineering, like a microprocessor, something, blah, blah, um, doping and something like that. But what happened after graduation, as soon as well, I moved back to my country in uh, South Asia, in, in Sri Lanka. Then uh, now I am in 20 years, I am working in completely different fields. And uh, I, I, I have tried to, like, like 2015, I have tried to go back to Denmark and try in my field, like automation field. But when I faced three interviews, but when I faced my interviews, they are asking question about my field, automation. But I don't have actually any experience about in my field because I, I need some different field uh, in, in my country. But uh, I'm trying you know, sometime when I'm coming, visiting as a visiting visa, I'm coming, I'm facing interviews. And also I'm a member of IET and council member UK. That uh, Still, I, I couldn't move back to my what I learned in beginning. beginning. I'm in the completely different field. So I, mm. I just want some uh, positive uh, feedback. So, so, so if you understand my situation. I, I hope I understand your question. So this is what I would answer to you. And I, I wish I had actually been given this answer back in my day. So we create our reality. 
And whoever's asking the questions from you, they have only this reality. They've only experienced this reality. And you are kind of clashing against a reality that isn't aligned with yours. So they're asking questions and you trying to fit in when you were born to stand out. So rather than try and fit into their reality, create your own and advertise that, market that. So that you are confident in who you are and putting out something as opposed to creating a different version of yourself to be for somebody else. So that they can hire you, accept you, or, or put, you know, give you what you think you need, whereas you create your own thing. Because you've got, we can do it all. You've got so much experience, which is amazing. So you don't need to fit into the into their world. Help them see your world as well. So okay. that you can expand their reality. Did I understand your question? Yeah, I understand, I understand, I understand. You mean start be begin uh, yeah, yeah, do it again. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, I understand bye. Okay, thank you. We have someone else. Let's see if this works now. Let's see. Hand mic. I've handed the mic. <laughs> Do you see anyone coming on stage? Hi, uh -huh. he I'm not sure why. This is not working perfectly today. Oh, um, boy. Oh, yeah. he's gone. He's from Nigeria. That's a yeah. shame. Exactly. We, I saw him too. Let's see. Maybe we'll come back. In the meantime, um, I like this idea that you that you uh, mentioned of selling, uh, not selling your soul, but instead leading with it. So, uh, would you like to elaborate a little bit uh, on this? Uh, it has to do with oh, authenticity and having the right motivation. Oh, okay. Well, okay. This is unexpected. All right. I thought this was not lost connection. Must yeah, I, see, I think this is related to poor internet connections, unfortunately. Yeah. Let's try again. Hi, hello. Are you with us? I'm so sorry about this. I think we have to move on. Uh, so any last thoughts? Okay, there we go. Hi. Hi. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um. The thing is, I I I actually study statistics in school, and uh, I'm trying. I'm in my twenty eighth, and I'm trying to change. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, internet. All right. I'll, I suggest that you type it on. I suggest that you type it on under our Q and A uh, tab. And so we have two minutes left. So maybe. Uh, again, picking up on this topic of you know leading with your soul, yes, not sell your soul. Yes, would you like to elaborate on this? Yes. a little bit. In a nutshell, because we've got two minutes, it's all centered around not people pleasing, and it was pretty much leading back to what um, uh, I didn't know what his name was before the question is that whatever the perception is from someone else in your career, your field, your environment, we tend we we've been taught to people please. It's just sure. the way that it is. So when you are leading with your soul, you are no longer people pleasing because you're within your, you're at peace within yourself and you're okay with someone going or taking something personal that you said or that you did or even putting a photo out there and they're offended by it. And you're going, well, that's your problem. You know, go in light and peace and enjoy that. But at the moment, I'm good with where I am at the moment. Sometimes there will be things where you need to reflect for yourself, where you're like, oh, maybe that was a mirror, a reflection of something that I need to deal with. But when you're leading with your soul, you're no longer people pleasing or putting other people first, but putting yourself first. You've got the mask on yourself first. True. Very true. All right. In Let a nutshell. <laughs> in a nutshell. Yeah, we have one minute left. Um, we have somebody that asked, I am in a man man managerial position and I can actually relate to this. Uh, so somebody who is a manager can relate to this. So what are your, th what are your thoughts on that, uh, Sashka? <laughs> well, in a managerial position, you're always needing to be, you need to manage a team. So it's, you're always putting everyone else first because you're scared, you know, because you've got to make sure that they're all happy. But when sure. you put yourself first, 
and not take everything personal, then there's a different, it's different because then you're going to be taking everyone into consideration, but you first. Yeah. And then they, you're able to then lead and innovate from a place of um, empathy as opposed to sympathy. Sure. Very last one. Now uh, we have some more questions. Uh, time for one. Last one. How would you uh, advise on this? How to make your own brand by considering other people's opinions? So right you don't. Now. You don't consider other people's opinions because your brand is yours. It's your vision. It's got nothing to do with them. They've got their own vision. They've got their own thing that they need to do. So whether it's friends, family, work colleagues, strangers, they can think what they think. They can have their opinion, which is great. Maybe there's things that challenges your status quo. But at the end of the day, your brand is yours. It's mine. It's my baby. You stick. This is your space. This is my space. When you're doing dirty dancing movies, this is my space, your space. Sure. Thank you very much. Again, um, we will wrap it up with this uh, last question that we had. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Sorry for the technical difficulties. This happens every now and then. Um, Make sure you stick around for the next panelist. Thank you, everybody. Have a nice event. Bye-bye.